Each spring, sometimes hidden, but often in plain view, one of nature's greatest miracles unfolds as birds nest and raise their chicks. The miracle begins when birds migrate into areas with good nesting sites. Snow geese travel from California to the Arctic tundra, about 3,000 miles away. American white pelicans come from the California coast to nest on an island in a desert lake. Then comes the actual nesting. A Canada goose scoops out a shallow depression and lines it with feathers from her own body. This great horned owl occupies a red-tailed hawk's nest. Two ospreys return to a nest they built last year. close to a river, railway, and freeway. I first started recording them at the end of April as they refurbished their nest and visited them every few mornings, sometimes just after sunrise and sometimes before. Both birds look alike, but the females slightly bigger. I call her Connie because she's so constant in her duties as a mother. The male is Ajax. They're mated for life. Some people mistake ospreys for bald eagles, and others call them fish eagles. But ospreys are large hawks with five to six foot wingspans. Ajax brings most of the nest materials, while Connie does most of the arranging. Like two lovers moving into a new house, they take breaks for mating. Birds have an opening called a cochlea, used for waste removal, sperm transfer, and egg laying. Ajax has to maneuver his to cover hers. He can't grab her with his sharp talons, so he stands on his knuckles. Between mating, they make lovers' eyes at each other. Soon after mating, Connie lays the first of two eggs. Once her eggs have been laid, Connie can't move them. After her chicks hatch, she must wait until they can fly. Laying an egg commits Connie, Ajax, and the future of her family to this messy nest atop a power pole by a fickle river active railway and busy freeway. Will Connie succeed in raising her family here? Canada geese delay sitting on their eggs until the last has been laid. Their chicks hatch at almost the same time and can run, swim, and eat on their own. Mothers follow their chicks and abandon any unhatched eggs. Connie starts sitting as soon as she lays her first egg and her chicks will hatch several days apart. She and Ajax fall into a routine for four weeks while she sits. He brings a fish each morning. Ajax gives her the fish and takes her place over the eggs. Connie eats on a branch to keep her nest clean. Then she grooms a bit and returns to sitting. She can be very pushy about sitting. Ajax is devoted and rarely arrives without a stick or fish. In May, the river's up 
and he can catch a fish in 15 to 20 minutes. Connie sits day after day, week after week, in cold, wind, rain, and snow. In early June, Connie becomes restless and starts looking down. An egg is hatched, but the chick is too small to see. A few days later, the first tiny head rises into view. Connie's routine changes. She moves around, splitting her time between feeding her first chick and covering the remaining egg. After a few more days, a second head appears. I call the first bigger chick Primo and the second Junior. The chicks are very vulnerable and this is the beginning of their most perilous time. Red-tailed hawks, great horned owls, ravens and crows see the nest and know that Connie's chicks are in it. Let's take a break from Connie and visit a red-tailed hawk nest in a city park. She has three chicks. Her firstborn's about ready to fly, and the youngest is still quite small. The mother hawk splits her time between sitting in a nearby tree and hunting for food. I watch for several days, waiting for the first flight. But suddenly, the nest's empty. There's a chick on the ground, but it's not ready to fly. What happened to the other chicks? Were they eaten by another bird? This chick's in mortal danger, exposed to cats, dogs, and people. It seeks refuge at the park swimming pool, where it cries for food. Its mother cries for her chicks, but there's no response for the nest. And her instincts don't respond to chicks at swimming pools. The Department of Wildlife takes the chick, but the red-tailed hawk's nest is not a success. Connie guards her nest constantly, but the biggest threat is weather. A week of 100 degree temperatures arrives. The actual temperature on the ground near the nest is 140 degrees. The chicks could overheat and dehydrate. Connie shades them with her body and wings. Ajax brings fish each morning and Connie feeds her chicks. Both adults bring more sticks and the nest grows deeper as the chicks get bigger. Primo and Junior are growing fast and need more food each day. But the river's way down because of a drought. I watch for an hour every couple of days between 6 and 8 a.m., but seldom see Ajax. Reservoirs are nearly empty. Where water stood 40 feet deep, sheep now graze. Where people boated, they now park. Will Ajax be able to feed his family? Connie's eating an old dead fish, a sure sign of food scarcity. Connie brings more sticks. Primo's nearly grown has flight and tail feathers, and helps his mom arrange the sticks. At the end of July, both chicks are almost the same size. Primo's very interested in the world beyond his nest. He practices flapping, but it's a long way down, and he can't make the short hop into space.
Finally, the enchanted moment arrives, and Primo is suddenly airborne, transformed from a nestling into a full-fledged bird. He lands in a tree. It's easier to land in a tree than it is to leave. By next morning, he's making practice flights, streaking up and down the river and landing with confidence. Junior's alone in the nest, flapping. Soon, the nest will be empty. After a few weeks, Primo and Junior will learn to catch their own fish, and the family will drift away on its winter migration to South America. I'll never know what happens to Primo and Junior but it's time to say goodbye. Baby Connie and Ajax will return next summer to again perform the miracle of nesting.